To demonstrate using relative positioning with absolute positioning, I am again going to uh, use a mock-up of the Aram Sororian poem, uh, two sentences. Uh, when I started doing this uh, by showing clearing floats where I had the title and the first class floating left and then the second class clearing that float. So I'll, I'll use the, the sort of dummy file that I made for that. And I'm just going to transform that a little bit. So um, what I had set up was just each of the pieces were in a separate div, the title, uh, the first line, and the second line. And then in the style sheet, I have a universal selector that sets my margins and padding to zero. I have um, then an ID for the title and a class, uh, an ID for the body, and then a class for the first and second line of the poem, uh, dot one and dot two. Now, if I want to use absolute positioning with relative positioning, what I have to remember are um, two kind of majorly important things. Uh, the first is if I'm using relative positioning to define one div, and that if that div is going to be the item on which everything else is relating, then I need that div to basically um, nest all of the others, or I need the other divs to nest inside that one. So if I'm going to use, just that an, as an example, my title div um, as the relative div, uh, or the div uh, by which all of the other absolutely set divs are going to be made relative. Um, so instead of closing the div here, I'm going to Command X to cut that close div tag. I actually need to close the div after my two divs that I'm going to set in absolute positioning. So um, that basically means nest my two divs inside of that. So that might make a little bit of a change to what our page looks like, of course, because everything's sort of being wrapped in the title. Um, so that sort of renders my uh, class CSS declarations uh, a little bit mute for the moment. So I'm going to make some changes. Um, I'm actually going to delete any of my floats uh, because my floats aren't really going to be active with what I'm going to be using, which is relative and absolute positioning. So I'm going to add a position property, and I'll set the title to relative. That basically says that my title is the div, or if you can think of it as the box, um, that everything nested inside of it is going to sort of be based upon. Now my class one, I'm also, whoops, I'm also going to go ahead and set up a position property and I'll use absolute positioning for this one. I'll do the same thing in my second class. So far I don't really see any changes, um, but what I would like to do is since my width is 200 pixels of the title, I'm going to go ahead now and set my dot one class to being 200 pixels from the left of my title. So left 200 pixels. Now I'm going to go ahead and preview this. So I can see what's happening now. Uh, remember, always preview in a browser. Sometimes Dreamweaver doesn't really give you an accurate preview. Here's my title. Here's my first class. It starts 200 pixels um, you know, across the page, which is basically it's relating 200 pixels from where the start of that title is. Now my second class doesn't have, uh, my, rel doesn't have my uh, value, my left value ascribed to it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I could do the same thing for the second class. Uh, or I could maybe say even start it a little bit further over. Let's just give it a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm seeing my first class and my second class. Notice the second class starts up here on the same line. That clear property has uh, nothing to do with absolute and relative positioning. So if I'm calling absolute and relative positioning, my floats and my clears um, aren't really going to be working very well because when I use this kind of positioning, I am kind of working outside of the normal flow of the page. So I can get rid of my floats and clears because they're not going to do anything for me anyways. If I want the second, let's go back to the browser just to look at where this is. If I want the second um, 
div, which is the second line of the poem, to appear beneath the first line, then I'm going to need to give it some top value. So I'll go back to my CSS code and I'm going to also add top. And I don't know how much I'll need, but let's try 50 pixels and see what that does. Okay, so that's now it's kind of stepping down the page a little bit. So I'm essentially, I'm working in reference to the title on the page. I also could give these a little bit of width so they don't just have this default kind of box shape. Let's say 160 pixels. This will greatly change how things are looking, but let's go ahead and see. Um, so now I have a kind of a longer width here. And if I wanted to, I could also even change where this box is. So notice I've left it at zero from the left, so I'm still kind of hugging the left margin. Uh, but I moved my title 50 pixels down uh, from the top of the browser. And now everything that is set to absolute position in relation to the title moves accordingly. Notice I did not have to add an extra top value, an extra 50 pixels to my top value here or here, because these two are relating back to this div. So absolute and relative positioning can work hand in hand. What you have to remember is that you're going to choose your one div and that's going to have to nest your other divs, right? So the div tag surrounds those other divs. That one will be positioned relative. Anything nested inside where you're working sort of based off the values, the left top uh, or left or top or right or bottom values, um, it's going to declare, be declared with absolute positioning and then you can use your left top, right or bottom values inside.